Hello, this is Alex on Pangio Techno Valley Weekly News. Here's the news from the third week of June. First up, Neighbor to commercialize future space construction. Neighbor Labs and Neighbor Cloud announced on the 8th that they will commercialize their ARC, their multi robot intelligence system, and 5G specialized network by 2023 and start popularizing futuristic spaces such as the new office building 1784. Neighbor's second office building, 1784, and the second data center, GAK Sejong, scheduled to be completed in 2023, are huge technology test beds that combine advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence, cloud computing, 5G, digital twin, robotics, and autonomous driving. In 1784, new experiments are underway, including the self driving robot Rookie, Clover face recognition automatic meeting minutes preparation and sharing Clova Note, temperature, lighting, and ventilation control, food and beverage orders through NeighborWorks app, and at GAK Sejong, where robots and self-driving shuttle buses will help server managers. Neighbor added that the core technologies that make up the two spaces, the best empirical examples of technological convergence are ARC, AI Robot Cloud and 5G Cloud, and that other buildings will be able to transform into future spaces through Neighbor's technology. Sok sang -ok, CEO of Neighbor Labs, said the future space will be centered on software that will enable new experiences in it beyond buildings. Adding, as a team, Neighbor made the first attempt to do so even before and after 1784 construction, so many future spaces will also start with Neighbor's technology. Second up, OnLab wins AWS Rising Star Partner of the Year Award. OnLab announced on the 7th that it has won the AWS Rising Star Partner of the Year Award at the recently held AWS Partner Summit Korea 2022. This award is given to the partners who have achieved excellent performance in a short period of time, such as high growth and attracting a number of customers among domestic partners included in the AWS Partner Network, or APN. OnLab won this award in recognition of its remarkable growth as an AWS partner by securing customers in various industries such as finance and fintech, medicine and healthcare, software development, and construction, based on the security-specific cloud management service OnLab Cloud. OnLab is strengthening its expertise as an AWS partner. In recognition of its comprehensive capabilities as a service partner, it has obtained the AWS Advanced Tier Service Partner Rating and is also participating in the AWS Solution Provider Program, where the company can resell and provide AWS services to end customers. I think this award is the result of the recognition of OnLab's capabilities and growth potential as a cloud managed service provider, said Kang Seok Kyun. CEO of OnLab. He added, we'll continue to make efforts to build and operate a safe and efficient cloud for customers based on continued cooperation with AWS going forward. For our third main story, Ministry of Science and ICT joins hands with NHN and Kakao to foster 90,000 potential digital workers. The government will cooperate with companies such as NHN and Kakao to nurture 90,000 potential digital workers by 2027. On the 8th, the Ministry of Science and ICT held a public-private cooperation digital talent training ceremony and on-site meeting at NHN's office building located in Bundang, Songnamshi, Gyeonggi-do. On the same day, the Ministry of Science and ICT announced its plans to invest a total of 110.9 billion won in six major projects to foster talented people in cooperation between the public and private sectors this year. It plans to nurture about 10,000 future digital employees this year and train a total of 90,000 people by 2027. First, the Ministry of Science and ICT will introduce a new Campus Software Academy this year, where companies train talent with participating universities and a networking campus software academy that combines local universities, local governments, and local industries. In addition, a new company membership software camp will be established, 
in which small and medium-sized companies struggling with providing education will benefit from a joint curriculum. It will also run an innovation academy that will discover prospective developers and strengthen their practical skills and continue to push for Software Maestro, in which mentoring services are provided by employees. In addition, the Ministry of Science and ICT is also expanding the Information and Communication Technology Innovation Square that fosters talented people in fields such as artificial intelligence and blockchain technology, focusing on five major regions. The Ministry of Science and ICT plans to come up with a digital innovation talent training plan by collecting opinions from industry, academia, related sectors, and also launch the Digital Talent Alliance, a public provided cooperation system for fostering talent. For our final main story of the oh, only. For our final main story, Naver pays on site payment easily enjoy with a smartwatch. It is now possible to make on-site payments using Naver Pay only with an Apple Watch without taking out your mobile phone. Naver Financial announced on the 7th that it has released Naver Pay Watch app that can be used on smartwatches. It is available on Apple Watch and Galaxy Watch. The Naver Pay Watch app currently provides QR on-site payment that is compatible with Naver Pay points. After installing Naver Pay app on a smartwatch, logging in through mobile phone pairing, opening the app, and touching the point screen, a QR code will appear immediately. Insufficient points during payment are automatically charged with the account linked to the user's Naver Pay account. Payments linked to cards will be released in the third quarter. Trey Janu, general manager of Naver Pay, said, Naver Pay Watch App is the most frequently proposed service by Naver Pay App users. Adding, we launched it to provide convenience where people can make payments without taking out either their wallets or mobile phones. And now it's time for the quick news of the week. First up, Gaming Industry Knowledge Ground NDC 22 opens. Nexon's blockchain strategy unveiled. Nexon announced on the 8th that it had opened the 2022 Nexon Developer Conference, which is called the largest knowledge sharing platform in the gaming industry in Korea. There were 60 lectures covering various topics such as the metaverse, non-fungible tokens, programming, and data analysis, as well as careers for future employees. And for our second story, Samsung Heavy Industries' eco-friendly ammonia fuel technology has received international certifications one after another. Samsung Heavy Industries announced on the 9th that it had received basic certification from the American Bureau of Shipping for ammonia fuel propelled large container ship design at the Shipbuilding and Marine Fair Poseidonia 2022 that was being held in Athens, Greece. And for our final story, industry academic cooperation of noise vibration tech in the defense industry. LIG Next One consultative body, Yonsei University's Joint Institute for Mechanical Convergence and the Korean Society for Noise and Vibration Engineering gathered together to secure R&D technology capabilities for noise vibration in the defense industry. The LIG Next One consultative body consists of LIG Next One, KS Systems, AMT, Daeyong M Tech, and RF Systems. And that's it for the Pangyo Techno Valley Weekly News. My name is Alex Sigrist, and I'll see you next time.